there's been a variety of uh, nutritional things that w- I've been involved with in terms of are there some supplements that can be used to help um, decrease the occurrence or the severity of myopathies um, in the postmortem period or, or whatnot? Um, and I, the big goal in that one is, yes, to find something that can reduce the incidence of myopathies, but also you don't want to affect performance. And so, because that's a big thing, right? You know, you don't want to slow growth down. And we know slowing growth down can decrease that incidence, but um, we're also about production and we don't want to lose too much because that's going to affect the efficiency um, overall. Hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of the Poultry Nutrition Black Belt Podcast, where we cover some of the latest in poultry nutrition research and industry trends in approximately 10 minutes. I'm one of the co-hosts of the show, uh, Sam Rocho. I'm an associate professor of poultry nutrition at Auburn University. I formerly was at uh, the University of Arkansas and am joined by a former colleague uh, there, Dr. Casey Owens. Uh, Dr. Owens is an expert in meat quality uh, of poultry. Uh, She's been at uh, University of Arkansas for approximately 24 years uh, after being trained at, at Texas A&M. So it's a great pleasure to talk with my friend and former colleague, uh, Dr. Owens. How are you today? Hey, Sam. Thanks for having me. And I'm glad to be here. Always glad to chat with you and um, hopefully can, I don't know, share a few nuggets of something. <laughs> sure. Absolutely. Uh So, you know, your focus is meat quality. Um, Can you talk a little bit about just the general areas over your career of of meat quality uh, that you worked on? I know you kind of started in turkeys and then kind of transitioned more to to, uh, their chickens and have looked at different aspects of meat quality all along the way. So can you kind of just give us an overview of, of your history of work and research? Sure. So my overall program is, um, about poultry meat quality, um, poultry meat science, and that can have multiple aspects, meaning that um, we can look at meat quality issues that arise from live production type issues. So it could be genetics or environmental stress or um, growth rates or or whatnot, things of that nature that can impact quality um, that we see in the postmortem period. So that's one aspect. Another one would be looking at processing me- methods, how some techniques um, like deboning chicken carcasses and at what time you do that, what kind of influence that can have on um, poultry meat quality. Um, and then what another area I call like poultry um, further processing or kind of that post-processing aspect. And that would be more in the um, like marination and and what to do with products that we have maybe de- meat quality defects. We're going to um, put those into other products like a nugget or a patty or a deli loaf um, and see um, what functional ingredients can improve um, those aspects or if we're looking for an ingredient replacement or whatnot. And so it's covered the span. I've, I've worked a lot on um, uh, product defects. Um, so it's kind of a, been a, a big feather in my cap in terms of things I look for um, and so forth. So I'd say in recent years, recent years and <laughs> my my yesterday seems like it could be 10 years or 15 years or just yesterday but um my, uh you know meat quality defects such as the myopathies white striping and woody breasts have been a big emphasis in my research um area over the last several years so ready for more sustainable poultry production New data suggests that decreasing bacterial loads in feed using Termin 8 supports entric health, leading to improved performance. Gut health is more than a gut instinct. Learn more today at www.anatox.com. And you've also uh, collaborated with uh, different engineers over the years, looking at different methodologies for measuring uh, meat quality, also uh, detection of meat quality. Can you talk a little bit about that? Sure. I mean, initially we, um, uh, with a coworker here, Dr. Jean-Francois, uh, Francois Molinet, we developed a, um, method to 
measure tenderness indirectly. Um, so just a new technique and that's widely used out there. So, um, and I bring that up is because I do like to look at different methodology to assess meat quality. And so what you're probably talking about is how to detect like woody breast or white striping. So we've looked at, um, some different things like image analysis, um, developing relationships between like carcass parameters and, um, myopathies in the in the breast fillets um and have some good prediction values there um i've been collaborating with um a food engineer in um in our in our university um dong yi wang on some hyperspectral imaging as well so those are some different things that that we've looked at um all in a ways to assess and predict or detect these issues in the plant because if we have big issues in the plant what do the plants do with it um, some of the product and the myopathies or, or defects, I'll just say myopathies for an example, um, need to be diverted into other products where the defects won't be so noticeable or detractable from that, um, product, the product attributes and so forth. So. Very neat. So you've been at kind of the, the interface of, of, you know, where we really see the myopathies and so have focused or, or defects, as you say, and then focus both on the back end, you know, what to do once those are present. But then you've also, and this is where you and I have worked, like looked at kind of what we can do to prevent those sure. or at least minimize the, the progression or severity to some extent. Um, we'll talk a little bit about nutrition, but what type of work have you done around, you know, evaluating uh, potential causes of, of defects in myopathy? You know, we've we've looked a lot of strain work over the years. Um looked at different growth rates. So we've been, we've looked at some studies where we've um, fed high nutrient dense diets versus lower nutrient dense diets. And this work goes back to, you know, when myopathy is really just kind of being, uh, or just emerging and that's back with white striping and mm -hmm. 2008, 2009, 2010, that, that kind of period. And so there weren't a lot of people doing work in the area at the time. And so that's, um, we were looking at growth rate and that impact on white striping. And then, so we began to see, um, the woody breast kind of in 2014, 2015, and that really took off. And a lot of um, researchers kind of came in and, and have done a lot of work from a lot of different angles throughout the, the scientific community. But, um, there's been a variety of uh, nutritional things that w I've been involved with in terms of are there some supplements that can be used to help um, decrease the occurrence or the severity of myopathies um, in the postmortem period or, or whatnot. Um, and a, the big goal in that one is, yes, to find something that can reduce the incidence of myopathies, but also you don't want to affect performance. And so, cause that's a big thing, right? You know, you don't want to slow growth down and we know slowing growth down can decrease that incidence, but um, we're also about production and we don't want to lose too much cause that's going to affect the efficiency um, overall. Yeah, no, very good point. So it has to be a complete uh, solution that, that helps one thing without harming another thing. Uh, one of the last kind of projects that you and I worked directly on was with uh, one of your students uh, who's now Dr. Clay Maynard. Uh, he did some work with uh, GAA, which is guanidino acetic acid. Uh, that is a precursor to creatine and so involved in the overall energy status of the muscle. Um, arginine is a precursor to GAA, so adding GAA um, has the potential to spare uh, some of that role of arginine, allowing arginine to be used for other things, uh, such as vasodilation, for example. Uh, so uh, a lot going on there mechanistically. Yeah. I think that's uh, close to our time for today. Uh, thanks again uh, for your time, and uh, we really appreciate uh, the insight and, and look forward to uh, your continued work in this area. Thank you for having me again, and it's always a pleasure to, to visit with you. and. Um, hopefully we'll get to continue to work together in the future. Absolutely. All right. Thanks, Casey. Hey, everyone. We're always searching for the latest and greatest research to share each week. And if you have a poultry nutrition related research trial and would like to come on the show and talk about it and share it with us, feel free to email the research link, uh, the paper where we can find it, 
or the abstract to hello at wisenetics.com. That's hello at wisenetics.com. And I look forward to hearing from you.